Assalamu alaikum. The pursuit for peace in Afghanistan is the most important matter in international politics today. I will share my thoughts on the importance for pursuing peace, challenges to peace, and my recommendations for achieving real and lasting peace in Afghanistan. Today, we are presented with a unique opportunity to potentially have a peace settlement with the Taliban. There is broad regional and international consensus and cooperation on this. It is important for us to achieve some sense of peace because our country has been at war for over 40 years and has suffered beyond imagination. Millions of people have been killed and injured, lost their livelihoods and homes, and become, ref become refugees and embarked on dangerous journeys in the quest for peace and a better life. It is for this reason that we must pursue peace, amongst many other reasons. We must never allow war and misery to be inflicted upon our people again, ever. A peace settlement with the Taliban would be a good and positive step in the right direction. But it will not in itself bring real and lasting peace to Afghanistan. Indeed, we should be optimistic about the future and the outcome of the peace talks with the Taliban. It, but it is critical that expectations are managed because while it is a big step in the right direction, it will not in itself bring peace to Afghanistan. We face challenges, broader challenges of a regional and international nature. Regional and international players will continue to exert their power and influence and play their games vis-a-vis -vis other powers in the region that are being played out in Afghanistan. There is a real power competition and that will continue. That will not change and it has been the case since time immemorial. We Afghans must not let this happen. We must defeat this historic curse that is the geopolitical competition that is being played out in our country and we must maneuver it and manage it effectively. Our geography does not need to be our destiny. We must use the power of our mind and intellect to overcome these obstacles. We must shape our destiny and only we can shape our destiny. No one else can do our job. We cannot delegate this to anyone, any nation or body. This is without any question whatsoever. So, you must be thinking, how do we control our destiny? This is a broad question and requires a substantive answer taking into account short-term, medium-term and long-term uh, plans, strategies and objectives. However, broadly speaking, our government must become strong from both a financial and military perspectives. We need a stable and driven government which promotes the national agenda aggressively without any fear. Foreign nations must know that we are able to influence political activity in their home country as well. I understand this is harder said than done, but we should be able to do it vis-a-vis -vis our neighbours, who are not the most strongest countries in the world. There is no friendship in politics. It's all about national interest. This is a well-known fact in political theory. We must move from a position of defense to offense. For instance, we face the greatest risk of terrorism in the world and we're often victims of it on a daily basis. In these circumstances, we should be the world's leading experts in counter-terrorism measures. We do not need sophisticated technology to achieve this. We face unique challenges that require bespoke policies 
And it requires us to use our intellect and ability to combat this menace that has held our country hostage for a very long time. This is unacceptable. We must develop ourselves and begin exerting our agency in the world. This can happen gradually, but we must work toward it more dynamically. Inefficiency is unacceptable. We should pursue everything from a position of strength and leverage. Weakness and sympathy will distance us from achieving lasting and sustainable peace. Peace can only be achieved through the efforts of our own hands. At the present moment, all sides must be sensible so we can, so we can try and reach a sensible political settlement with the Taliban. We should be open-minded as to the terms of such settlement, subject to few reservations and red lines, to pave, to pave way for a relatively more peaceful Afghanistan. As I have mentioned, this would be a positive step in the right direction. However, to achieve real and lasting peace in Afghanistan, we must take matters into our own hands become stronger and defeat those who attack us. Defeat them in all fields, not only the battlefield. And that will enable us to bring real and lasting peace to our country. Anything is possible, but we need real leadership, a pragmatist at heart and practice. Ultimately, the only way Afghanistan will achieve real and lasting peace is when we become a powerful nation and we can defend our rights and promote our interests. Thank you.